Yes, thank you so much. And good afternoon once again to everyone joining online and everyone at the venue. Unfortunately, I couldn't join at the venue. I wish I was there. Um, I saw the initial um, program this morning. If we can please move to, to the next uh, slide. So my presentation is quite brief. Um, Mankwe told me to keep it very short. So <laughs> I blame her for this short presentation. So it's just touching on the mandate of the CSR um, so that you know all the guests that are attending can have an appreciation of what it is that we do. Um, and then I will touch on the programs that we have in building and transforming human, human capital which is one of our key strategic objectives of the CSR. And then lastly, on the programs that we have um, for professional development, which is aimed at equipping our own researchers and uh, support staff within the CSR with the necessary competencies that are required for them to grow in their careers. Um, if you don't mind, I will also switch on my video. <laughs> Um, in terms of the mandate of the CSR, I'm sure most of the colleagues who are here today uh, know the CSR, I hope. So the CSR was established in 1945, and, and the mandate that we were given was to pursue um, multi multidisciplinary research uh, and technological innovation um, in order to support industrial and scientific development in the country. So uh, we don't work alone. Um, as per mandate, we work in collaboration with other partners uh, in the private and the public sector. And ultimately, um, the goal of the CSR as mandated by government is to improve the quality of life of South African citizens. So it's a huge task, um, yeah, but it's also an opportunity for the organization. The work that we do cuts across a lot of uh, sectors. Next slide, please. Um, in a nutshell, this is how the CSR looks like in terms of numbers. Uh, so we've got a total staff complement of about 2,200 employees. And about um, three quarters of those are set base, and that is our scientists, engineers, and technologists. And this is our researchers within the CSR who do the research development and innovation work that we are mandated to do. So we also track our demographics and the transformation targets within the CSR in terms of the Black South Africans and also the females, which is also one of our key strategic uh, priority, increasing the number of females and youth. Um, and also within the research space, how many of those uh, are Black and are females. We also track the level of qualifications, mainly focusing on um, set staff that have master's qualifications and set staff with PhD qualifications. We're sitting at around 18% and it's been a target of ours to grow to about 25% when we compare um, with other RTOs um, uh, who are doing similar work to what the CSR is doing, mainly doing both, both fundamental research and applied research. Um, and then in terms of where we are located, our major um, Campus is in Pretoria, in Linwood, but we do have campuses in Johannesburg focusing in mining, um, Deben, um, mainly on the environmental research um, and innovation. And then in Cape Town, Stellenbosch and Rosebank, uh, we do have campuses there as well, but a majority of the work um, happens in Pretoria. Thank you. And next. And this is how we are structured as an organization in terms of the research and development work that we do. Um, show some of my colleagues who probably came through yesterday. I saw in yesterday's program, there, there was a lot of discussion in some of these areas. So the way we are structured is we are structured um, according to three different divisions. Um, that is advanced uh, chemistry and life sciences. Within each division, there are three clusters. Um, so within the first one that is advanced chemistry and life sciences, uh, there's a focus on advanced agriculture and food, and then um, future production with the main focus on chemicals and then next gen health. So this is a lot of work um, in health technologies and innovation. The second division is advanced production and security. 
a lot of work in defense and security, working very closely with the Department of uh, Defense in the country. And then we also have a huge um, focus on mining and manufacturing. Uh, then the last one is smart society. So there, there is smart generation enterprises and institution. This is where a lot of the digital transformation work is happening, supporting the state, uh, public institutions, and also industry. And then we have smart mobility and smart mobility is mostly looking at the transport and logistics and roads infrastructure and then smart places. And this is more um, looking at the green and renewable energies and sustainability and environmental uh, research. So this is how our work is structured in terms of uh, research development and innovation and all the work that we do in terms of our skills development, 90% of it is to capacitate these clusters to make sure that they've got the right kinds of skills um, and the right kind of uh, personnel that is required for them to achieve the mandate of the CSR and to achieve our strategic objectives. Thank you, next slide. In terms of the pillars of our strategy, so I left out a lot of information about our strategic um, areas of focus, but looking at the pillars of our strategy, so it's the strategic clusters where we do the research and development and innovation work, which is important. Um, and this is where um, we deliver in terms of our strategic objectives to produce technological solutions and um, innovations for industry and also work with the state in coming up with new solutions, especially for um, our societies in areas that we're scrabbling, we're scrabbling with. And then we've got human capital development and what we used to call skills uh, development as well. And this is, you, this is how I wanted to indicate this is one of the key priorities of the organization, the topic of today, looking at how do science councils contribute in the development of skills to support industrial development and the state. So it's a huge focus and it's also one of our key pillars in our strategy to develop the relevant skills, especially in STEM. Um, and also our focus then is on strategic infrastructure, um, capability development in key uh, specific areas, um, and then enabling support that we will be um, a support, provide support that is agile and digitally enabled. But with this slide, I just wanted to show that one of our key priorities is to build relevant skills. Uh, next, please. And then when it comes to the programs that we have at the CSR, as I indicated, these are divided into two main programs, uh, what we call pipeline development. And this is mainly looking at um, um, student development and also um, you know, workplace skills programs that we have in terms of graduate uh, development. If you start at the bottom, so a lot of work starts at a youth outreach level where we work a lot uh, with SASTA, the NRF, the DSI, to really encourage young people to consider taking up STEM subjects and also pursuing careers in STEM. So we do a lot of work uh, in this area and, and then we partner with our communications department as well. Our focus has been mainly in rural areas because when we look at the uptake of all our programs, it's usually you know in the metros, a lot in Gauteng um, and in a little bit in the other metros. So now we're trying to really go out and, and focus our outreach in, in rural areas. And then we also have a CSIR bursary program. So this program specifically looks at uh, building the STEM skills or supporting qualifications in relevant areas that are required by the CSR. So we're gonna look at, you know, in the next three to five years, what do we need in terms of skills and talent? And then we will focus the call for the CSR bursary to target those specific areas. Um, sometimes we fund this program by ourselves, but we also get into partnership with other state institutions to expand on, on this program and grow the numbers um, that, that are required. So it's not only looking at our own sustainability, it's also looking at you know supporting the country in terms of um, developing uh, STEM skills. 
And then we also have a studentship program, and this is targeted at master's and, and PhD level. I think Bongi, uh, in, at the HSRC, then they would call it an internship program. So this is where we appoint um, students to do they are to pursue their master's and PhD uh, degrees. They will so it's like a hybrid. You are a student and you are also an employee of the CSR, and your research uh, for your master's and your PhD is based on a re CSR research topics. The reason this program was put in place was the realization that a lot of um, young people, especially you know from poor backgrounds, if you uh, graduate with your undergrad or honors degree, there's all this celebration that you know you're gonna start working. So we're losing a lot of young people from pursuing masters and PhD qualifications. So this program is saying we'll employ you to do your masters and your PhD so that at least we can increase the number of, of high uh, qualifications um, with, within um, the demographics that we are looking for. So this program has been with the CSR for, for a number of years now. So we partner with university, universities in the country. So the students will register with the university, but the topic, as I said, will be informed by, uh, by the CSR. So it's one of our successful programs. And we also then after the PhD, it increases our number of uh, staff with PhD qualifications because the aim is to then absorb them into the organization when they complete. And then we have a huge partnership with DSI uh, that we called uh, Inter Program Passary Scheme. Um, it's a scholarship program that supports honors, masters, and PhD studies. So these are full-time studies um, based at uh, local universities, and there's about 280 students that are supported. So this aims to build high-level skills in very key priority areas uh, that are determined by the, by the DSI, which are also aligned to the CSR. So it's one of other programs that we are looking into building high level skills. We have a postdoc program mainly funded by the NRF. So we apply to the NRF, but we also use our own funding um, to um, appoint postdocs to work at the CSR. And they also assist us in terms of providing supervision for some of our students in the studentship program. And then for work-based uh, skills programs, we've got the work integrated learning. So where we provide opportunities, like a 12 month opportunity for students from universities of technologies who need um, a work experience for them to graduate. So we have that program. And then we also have a graduate in training program. This is a more focused um, program, especially for, for the engineers. Um, who are coming out of our CSR bursary program. So in the past, they'll come out of the program, graduate and we place them across the CSR. And what we realize is that we, you know, you place them and you hope for the best that they are growing in terms of their chosen careers. So this is a program that is saying for the first three years, um, we're gonna monitor and, and support them in terms of their development. And for the engineers, it's aligned to them, to EXA, the Engineering Council of South Africa, the requirements for them to register as professional engineers. And then we also work with SACNAS in terms of the scientists. For, for this graduate in training program for engineers, they can join after their four year degree, but for scientists or the students who are pursuing science degrees, we encourage them to pursue masters and PhD degrees before they can join um, the CSR because of the type of work that we do. We also have an internship program, um, partly funded by the CSR, but we also um, uh, get support from the HSRC in terms of the internship program that they run with the DSI. Uh, as Bongi has mentioned, I think a lot of science councils are, are getting a lot of, of support through that program. And we've received a, a high quality of internships through this program. A lot of them do remain within the CSR and they get absorbed. So um, this is one of the successful programs I think that we have. But I think as science councils, you know, we have a, a very big role to play um, in providing experiential learning and providing uh, workplace skills um, development for graduates. You know, there are many other organizations as the NRF that provides bursaries. I think our key role and where we can really support 
um, the NSI is to providing this experiential learning and providing graduates uh, with experience and give them, you know, a chance uh, to become employed once um, okay. they have graduated. Next, please. So in terms of the numbers, I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to be very quickly. On the bursary program, we have almost 400 students. It used to be almost 500, uh, but the numbers have gone down a little bit because the funding into these programs is not increasing at the rate that we need to increase the awards um, or the financial contribution to the students and the fees have been going up. So the number is a little bit lower than we are used to, but um, it's a discussion we're having internally to see how we can expand on those programs. Of course, we don't work alone. So as I said, we have partnered with DSI, the NRF and the CETAS. And currently within that cohort, we have about 154 students who are pursuing PhDs and 121 at a master's level. In our graduate in-training program, it's very new. We started with it in 2019-20, uh, and we have supported over 107 or over 100 graduates uh, through this program. And 38 of them have been absorbed permanently. So as soon, most of them, as soon as they finish their three year with the CSR, they get absorbed. Some get absorbed before they even finish the three year uh, training within this program. And then in terms of the internship, we've got about 97 interns that are supported internally and then other interns then that we get through the HSRC. Thanks, next. And then we also have a professional development program within the CSR. So we build our pipeline um, to make sure that we've got a large pool of uh, scientists and engineers and technologists that can join the CSR. Once they join the CSR, um, the researchers within the CSR occupy a different level. So, so for junior researchers, it started a candidate researcher level. And then when they grow, they grow into a researcher and then a senior researcher. So this is a more competent seasoned professional in their area of expertise. Um, and um, at a principal researcher level, if I compare to the NRF rating system, your C rated scientists will be sitting here. So these are the researchers who are specialists in their field and they have a sustained track record. Um, that has led to a widespread recognition in their field. And this one with the CSR is mainly looking nationally, what is their profile in their uh, presence in terms of their research expertise. And then the ultimate is a chief researcher level. And if you compare, this will be your AP type rated scientists. So it's a chief researcher level. This is the ultimate level uh, within the CSR for a research specialist. So this is someone who has a, a, a track record in research and development and has attained an international profile um, in their research uh, space or their areas of expertise. So we count the CSR uses, you know, we track the number of principal and chief researchers that we have because that's an indicator of the strength of our research capacity as an organization. So we have a lot of programs. Uh, next, please. Yes, that's just to show we have a lot of support programs that are targeted at assisting the researchers to grow within the career ladder. We call it our uh, the CSR career ladder. So it's a framework to say for you to move from a candidate researcher level to a researcher level, these are the competencies that you need to acquire. And then there's a, a, a career ladder assessment that we use to check um, in terms of their development, that have they really developed to a researcher level, senior researcher, principal, or chief researcher level. Now to support them, there's a number of programs that in place. I already talked about the graduate in-training program. And also we've got the Young Researchers Establishment Fund that is aimed to really support them to grow. So at this level, really, they are looking at growing their own um, careers and they are focusing on developing themselves and because they are still working yeah. under supervision. And then as they grow to be independent, uh, we've got a program that is called an Accelerated Researcher Development Program. And that one assists um, and supports researchers, senior researchers to grow into principal researchers. And then we have another targeted program to assist principal researchers to grow into chief researchers. And then uh, underpinning these uh, programs that we have within the CSR, we also have a qualifications 
upgrade program or, or staff bursaries. So staff within the CSR can apply to uh, further their qualifications. And this is a bursary that is um, provided for annually within the organization. And then we have a partnership with LinkedIn Learning. When COVID came and we could not use, you know, access our academy at the CSR, then we looked around for, for e-learning platforms. And then we entered into a partnership with LinkedIn Learning to really support. Um, so it's not only researchers, all staff within the CSR have a license to you know, acquire new knowledge to upskill themselves or strengthen um, where they are in terms of their growth. But we also have the CSR Learning Academy that continues then now without um, the lockdown to provide um, a training in, in, in a lot of areas that our staff require interventions in. We also have a leadership and management development program, which we started rolling out last year. This is in partnership with Vets Business School, Marco Flay and UCT. So this is looking at different tiers of leadership and really to capacitate CSR leaders to ensure that we really um, <clears throat> um, talk to the strategy and perform or ensure that there is performance and that we um, drive our strategy within the CSR. Next, please. And then uh, other additional programs that uh, I already spoke about the outreach um, program. And then we have the corporate social investment program, which is also looking at one of the key pillars there is education and skills development. So through the CSI program, we have um, adopted about five schools, mainly in rural areas. So we have a school that we've adopted in Hammanskral and three schools in KZN. Um, that we're really working very closely with in terms of providing a lot of support to make sure that their learners, um, introducing them to, to um, careers in science and also assisting them with pushing the performance uh, in terms of maths and science at the school level. So we're working closely with those schools, but for CSI then we support a number of schools uh, during Mandela Day. Uh, by providing, you know, science equipment, office furniture, laptops, uh, uh, depending on, on how much we can provide in that particular year. Um, we also have a CSR Science Day where we, we invite a, a number of local schools to come to the CSR and they get an opportunity then to visit some of our research facilities within the CSR. And the main goal really is to try and excite them about possibilities in, um, in STEM careers. And then lastly, we have a youth employment service initiative uh, that we uh, signed up to. I think it's been three years now that we've been working with the youth agency. Um, and the main goal of this really was to see what it is that we can do as a CSR to also contribute in um, decreasing the, the number of unemployed youth in the country. Of course, it's not a lot. We currently have about 74 youth uh, that are on board. So it's similar to your internship program. So we, it's a 12 months uh, internship program. It's targeted at appointing unemployed youth. And these youth will be placed, based, some will be based at the CSR and some will be based at the SMMEs uh, that we are partnering with. So it has also been a very successful program. Some of them do get absorbed. But it also has a huge focus on um, um, females and also youth with disability. So since inception, we have supported about almost 220 unemployed youth uh, to come through to the CSR and get the work experience that will um, assist them in getting work opportunities after the program. I think this is my last slide. Next. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening.